This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey, what's happening everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here at Learn, Create, Play, and we are continuing our exploration of C-sharp programming. We are now moving into the world of types. Of course, before we start, if you do enjoy these videos, definitely subscribe to the channel. Once I finish this series, we'll be putting C-sharp in action by creating a game, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications when those videos are released. Types are a critical part of working with C-sharp. If you've been following along, you've already been exposed to them. Whenever you create a variable, you put the type before the variable name. So to create a variable for your first name, you would write the following. The word string indicates that you are working with a variable that contains text. To create a number, otherwise an integer, you do the following. Now you have an integer variable. When we define the type, it lets both us and the computer determine how we can use that variable. For instance, we can't divide or multiply the first name, nor can we uppercase the number of cats owned. Our code editor will report an error if we try. When you assign a variable type, you can never change that type, so you can't assign a number to a string or vice versa. A string is always a string, and an int is always an int. You can convert between types, but we'll cover that in a later episode. In c -sharp, we have lots of pre-built types, but you'll also be defining your own. Remember the text mesh pro U GUI, the type that we used in the first episode? That was a type defined by Unity. Whenever we create a new script in Unity, we are actually creating a new type. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's focus on what c -sharp calls simple types. As you can see, there are a few of them. Let's dive in with the string. But before I start off, let me tell you about my sponsor, Kadeco.com. Kadeco is a site for developers made by developers. With hundreds of instructors from around the world, you can learn about topics such as native iOS development, native Android development, and even multi-platform development with Flutter. Kadeco also features hundreds of free articles, including topics on game development covering both Unity and Unreal. As a pro subscriber, you can access a library of thousands of videos on a range of development topics. The curated learning paths are designed to teach the basics of development in a friendly and supportive way. Pro subscribers also have complete access to all the books at Kadeco, such as the Unity Apprentice, that aims to teach you Unity by creating a series of different games. Get started on your programming journey today by heading on over to Kadeco.com. Okay, let's dive into types. Open up your Unity editor with the current project in progress. Let's create a new script. In your project browser, select the scripts folder. Click the plus sign and select the C-sharp script option. Give it the name, My Types. Now double click on the script to open it up in your code editor. Let's play with some types. First, let's create a string type. As you know, strings contain just text. So, for example, you can use just numbers. Mind you, this isn't an integer. This is actually text, even though the content is all numbers. You can create strings with just empty spaces. Or even empty strings. Oftentimes, you'll create empty strings when you want to provide placeholders. If you want to use just a single letter, you can use the char data type. Some call it char, others call it car, 
and yet others call it care. As mentioned, it only accepts a single letter, and the letter must be placed between apostrophes. If you try to use multiple letters, you'll get an error. And the apostrophes are a requirement. If you use quotes, you'll get an error. The reason for this is that C Sharp assumes anything in quotes is a string. For now, let's revert it back. Generally speaking, I rarely use chars, but they are a good tool in your toolbox. Next, we have the bool type. Funny thing, this is named after George Boole, who wrote papers on mathematical logic. Fun fact, George's death was somewhat interesting. He caught a cold walking home in the wet rain. The code progressed into pneumonia. His wife, thinking she needed to replicate the conditions of the disease as a healing remedy, wrapped him up in wet blankets. Needless to say, he didn't survive. That said, a bool is simply a true or false value. You'll be using bools all over the place. They are the cornerstone of game logic. Okay, C Sharp provides lots and lots of different number types. You've already played with the int. This is 2 billion, but it's hard to read. You can actually use the underscore to make it easier. Let's create another number. Notice that we run into an error. What gives? The int has a range from about negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. It's what is known as a 32-bit number and can contain only that limited amount of numbers. If you aren't using negative numbers, you can drop the sign by using a uint. Of course, a uint can't contain a negative number, or you'll get an error. For now, you can delete that variable. In most cases, ints will be enough. If you need to go even bigger, you can use a long, which is a 64-bit number. There are smaller number types as well. For now, you can just focus on these simple types. If you are interested in learning about the smaller types and why numbers have determined ranges, check out the previous version of this episode. In this iteration, I found it's best for you to focus just on the general simple types so you don't get bogged down in the details that won't affect you for some time. We also have decimal numbers. You'll be working with two main types, float and double. Let's define a double.
the double is a 64-bit number, and it is the default decimal type in C-sharp. The float is the 32-bit equivalent. Being a smaller type, it can't contain the same amount of data. Thus, it's less precise than the double. Let's define a float. Notice the F at the end of the statement. By default, whenever we use a decimal, c -sharp assumes we are using doubles. So we need to opt into a float by adding an F to the end. Now Unity uses floats everywhere, so you'll get used to doing this pretty fast. Why use floats instead of doubles? In a lot of cases in game development, we don't need the level of precision provided by doubles. Thus, by using floats, we decrease our memory footprint. There is one last floating type, and it's called the decimal type. This is a 128-bit number used for financial calculations. If you are doing anything with money, use the decimal. Do not use float or doubles. Both of those types will cause errors in your financial calculations because of their lack of precision. Let's create a decimal now. Right out of the gate, we get an error. Can you remember why? C Sharp automatically assumes the 199 is a double. We need to let C Sharp know it's a decimal instead. For this, we use the M letter. Now we have a decimal. Now there are lots of other types and soon you'll be making your own types, but these simple types will get you started. Okay, now comes your challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create some Mad Libs. Let's do some prep work first. Head on back to Unity. Create a script called Mad Libs. Do this by selecting the scripts folder and clicking the plus sign. Choose C Sharp script. Now name it Mad Libs. We want to attach it to our text game object, but before we do that, let's remove our previous script already attached to it. Select the text game object and in the inspector, scroll on down through the list of components. When you see our Hello World script, click the three dots on the right-hand side. Choose the Remove Component option. To attach our script, select it in the Project Browser, then drag it on over to the Text Game Object. As you can see, there are many ways to attach scripts to game objects. Okay, before we code, let's adjust our text box. Select it and increase the size of the text box. You can do this by manipulating the handles on all four sides. Move it up to the top so that the text will fill the top part of the canvas. Select the font, then set the font to 30 and left justify the text. Now we are ready to start cooking. Double click the Mad Lib script to open it up in your code editor. Update the script to the following.
at long last, we get to your challenge. Your challenge is to create the variables that are referenced in the text. The statement is a bool. The verb, noun, adjective, and plural noun are strings. The number is an int, and the percent is a float. As you define these variables, give them values so that you can see them in the text. How'd that go for you? Don't worry if you get stuck, just keep practicing and you'll get better. Let's add the variables. Now switch back to Unity and run the game. Look at that. We have our Mad Libs printed out on the screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode where we talk about operators. See you then.